Hey, I'm Ash, the otter behind Otter Make Games, and today I'm wondering, what's the smallest unit of story in a game? And what's the largest for that matter, and does it even matter? Well, whether we know it or not, the size of our storytelling affects us every day. Stories are not only our escape, but it's how we interact with each other. We're hardwired for stories, They're the same as our ancestors before us, from epic sagas down to small town gossip. But how big should a story be? Well, context matters. On one end of the spectrum, the Lord of the Rings feels grand and epic, and it's packed with all these little world-building details down to the appendices. But flip that for a second. What if the first words in Fellowship were, Frodo had been given the ring and aside from some difficulties along the way, had cast it into the fires of Mount Doom. The end. And then Tolkien left the rest of the hundreds of pages empty, just to fill out the rest of the novel. And the other side of the spectrum? What about telling a joke to a circle of friends? With the right amount of embellishments, brevity, and wit, it can feel just as good as the epic novel comparatively. But what if you tell a five-hour story to that same circle of friends? Some of them, maybe a lot of them, might have walked away by then. And it isn't always easy to develop a feeling for this. I'm diagnosed autistic, so it's really difficult for me to pick up sometimes on what the audience expectation is unless they spell it out for me. But that's okay, this is just all part of failure forward. So okay, story shows up in our stories, in our movies, in our lives, but what about video games? Video games are interesting. On one hand, they have large, grand, 80-hour stories, and on the other, they can have games that are just mostly just mechanical and have hardly a story to be seen, and there's plenty of sizes of stories between those. I do love a good overarching story, but where I get really get excited and passionate is about the minute-to-minute -minute storytelling of the gameplay. That micro-gameplay story, whose smallest unit seems to be a button press that triggers a player interaction with the world around them. Or the world interacts with the player. We could go into frictionless enters, but let's just keep it simple with the button press for now. A single button press, and the character interacts with the world. It could be hostile, like an attack, or it could be something beneficial, like pulling a lever. There's a single instance of action and reaction. And then, from that smallest piece, you can build up from there. When the player swings their sword, what's the identity and tone of the game? What's the player's pose? Are they a stalwart hero? Are they a meek protagonist that has succumbed to poisoning? Animations aren't just about physicality of movement, but performance as well. How does the player perform that hit? Is it a quick jab? Or a slower, larger, more deliberate swing to show how powerful it is? Okay, that's the player's action, but what about the reaction? Is the enemy hit reaction over with quickly, or are they knocked down onto the floor for a few seconds? Do they flash red? Do they have iframes? Impact VFX? Damage floaties? Sound design? This has the potential to be a tiny narrative of the gameplay that plays out over the course of several seconds. More or less. Okay, that's for combat gameplay, but what about non-combat interactions, like a lever pull? What's the player interaction animation? Is it a scared, timid lever pull, or is it a fearless kick? Does the lever move quickly, or does it move slowly like it's broken? How long is too long of an interaction? Why can Red Dead Redemption 2 have incredibly long harvesting animations while Breath of the Wild feels perfectly content to just let the player spam the button to pick up the apples without any player animation at all? Well, it's the same difference between storytelling of an epic of Lord of the Rings and standing in your circle of friends telling a joke. What's the identity of the story you're trying to tell, and what are the audience expectations? Just so many things to consider for such a small moment. If done too much, or done too long, it can be grating to your audience. This all sounds like a lot, right? Well, let's walk through it again with another interaction, but this time it's the opponent interacting with the player, and the player reacts. Okay, you're making a tiny little game. It's about the itsy bitsy spider. Let's call it Itsy. We all know the story. The spider, the rain, the Sisyphean struggle up the water spout. What if the story actually had a theme beyond that? Like, maybe about burnout, or being stuck in the same cycle. But that extra bit of theme and story identity, we never tell the player that. We only want the player to feel that. But let's just focus on the heart of the conflict for now. The tiny spider versus the torrential downpour of water from above. The goal was to climb the spout, 
then the water standing in our way would be the villain. So what happens when the water actually hits the player? Do we need a trilogy length account about the water and the water's ancestors? Or does this need to be done quickly so we can get the water out of the way and get the player back to the game? So if the game is a simple climber and is meant to be fast paced, then we don't want to waste the player's time, especially if they have to run into this water again and again and again throughout the game. But if we make the water move by too quickly, the player won't understand what happened. They won't understand why they lost, and that could feel just terrible for the player. So let's slow that down a bit, so that way that the player can process that they're being mo slowly moved towards the, the game over zone at the bottom of the screen. To stretch out the timing for readability, because it's important for the player to understand how and why they were hit. Okay, so now that we roughed in the speed of the motion, what else can we do? The player can have a hit react animation to show that they're caught on their waterfall to show that he's being flushed down with the water. And currently the player has no control over whether they're flushed away. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. This water is the only villain in the game, so we do want to keep things interesting, right? Is the user experience that we're after that the player has to sit there and helplessly watch as Itzy gets moved down towards the bottom of the screen in the water? hoping they don't get washed away? What if the player could try to fight against it by repeatedly spamming the tap to make it to get short, small hops going against the current of the water that's rushing him down? And we're not talking about a big hop here, just a small hop here so that the water can still feel like uh, the main source of conflict. And with this, the player can still have some sense of fighting back, even if it's only buying a second or two. In a tiny, small game like this, that could be feel huge. Now, how about the look and the feel of the water? Is it animated? Is it slow moving water? Is it fast rushing water? I think we don't want the rushing water in the end to feel the danger. How about the sound design? Do we want the water to sound large and echoey in this tiny water spout? We are a tiny spider after all, facing a giant force. And we can keep going from there. If the player is caught in the water, should we skew the color of the water around the player brighter so that the player is easy to see? Should we use VFX to help sell the splashing and chaotic nature of the water? Possibly shaders. This may sound like it's overdoing it, but it's really just putting a magnifying lens on the design. Because in the end, these details will help build out the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and ultimately how you want your players to feel. Even outside of games, this is part of our daily life too. How we tell our stories based on our audience and our intentions. What stories we tell about ourselves and about others, either in a game, a friend group, a movie, social media, or even letter by correspondence. People are still doing that, right? We get to mold our story and embellishments to the situation. This can make a friend laugh. This can make an interviewer see something in ourselves that we see ourselves. This can even help to honor and memorialize friends that have passed on by sharing their memories based on the stories we tell. So I want to use games to tell that story, sometimes using tiny games or slightly larger than tiny games to tell that story. Instead of AAA games or AA games, something closer to maybe micro A games. Small, agile, but dense with intent. I feel like anybody can do this with their stories provided they keep in mind their audience expectations and intentions, and keeping an eye on what feeling you want them to walk away with once they've put down the controller. So, my story about story size ends here. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and keep an eye out for my next video when I ask the question, how am I supposed to fail forward when my own brain is fighting against me? Bye. What if the first world <laughs> or deliberate attack to show off the attacks? This happens to this. <laughs> it's about itsy bit. <laughs> Try to fight against it with short, small hops by repeatedly spamming, <laughs> repeatedly spamming tap. With short, small hops by repeatedly t <laughs> spamming tap, spamming tap, tapping spam, stamming pap. Sad. That's not a good one. Sad. <laughs>